Woman leading the pack again. Good morning. I'd like to call the pack. I mean, the in order. It's Thursday, December 15th. It is 9.01 a.m. This meeting, all other means of this committee are open to the public. Proper notice has been posted and given to the media in accordance with Wisconsin statute. So this is maybe a little more time, place, and agenda of this meeting. Um, as far as roll call, we got Fred zooming his dick on too. He's on the phone here. Yeah. Okay, both are up. So we have everyone here. I need a motion to review and approve the agenda. Is there any changes before we do that, Casey? No changes to the agenda. We've got um, some VIPs in the room today, and they're first on the list. So yeah, I want to hear from Fred and Dick. Oh, you can hear me right now. I move to approve the agenda. Oh, okay. I'll second it. Thank you. We've got a motion by Fred Zog. Yep. Second by Dick Rowan. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Motion carried. I had to make sure they're not sleeping. Yeah. Okay, I need a motion to approve the minutes of the previous meeting of November 17th, 2022. Is there anything that needs to be changed? Not to my knowledge, yeah, okay. motion. Move to approve. Motion by Jim Nygaard. Second. Second by Lee Muck. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Public comment, Casey? No public comment at this point. Okay, then we, we're going to do an approved payment vouchers. Um, all right, we'll start with, we've got three payment vouchers. The first one we'll start with is dated November 25th, 2022. I touch on anything that exceeds $1,000 or more. We'll go into the second one and the third one, and then we'll get to our um, retirement resolution. So the first one I've got for the first payment manager register is Aaron Equipment Exchange, a bill for $17,239.93 charged to unit 114 and 741. Invoice from DLT Solutions for engineering software upgrades for mechanics software that was $8,166.48. Energy Solution Partners sold us diesel fuel at our Wapaka shop, charged for a stock account for $34,214.49. Fastenal had invoice chargeable to all of our accounts for $1,422.07. Oaks Brothers Construction had an invoice for $1,014.24, selling us some gravel and limestone, some clear three-quarter inch, charged back to the state routine maintenance agreement account, and then our county park and rec account. Garrel Oil Equipment had an invoice for $34,598.55, charged to the stock account for purchasing diesel fuel in New London. GFL Environmental, gets rid of our waste. So that was 50-50 split between our buildings and grounds cost pool and the state RMA for $1,952.50. Gold Cross Ambulance Service um, had an invoice for $1,283.88 charged to our medical account, which is fringe benefits. That was for upgrading our AED pads and batteries at, our, uh, at this shop and in the foreman's vehicles. Green Bay Highway Products had an invoice for $5,371.60, charged back to the town of Little Wolf and also County Highway E, just north of Wapaka, for some plastic culverts that we replaced for next year's um, overlay. Calron Lubricants sold us oil dispenser, cart, and hose, charged back to our shop tools cost pool for $1,045. GX Enterprises had an invoice for $3,188.02, charged to stock account, Unit 57, shop supplies, and Unit 1182. Lakeland Automotive had a bill for $1,410.81, charged to stock account, shop supplies, and buildings and grounds. MCC sold us uh, gravel for a few of our projects and also to the town of Little Wolf. The rest went on to the stock, which is the remaining amount comes back off the trucks unused. That was for um, $43,206.67. Noragon Systems upgraded the JPR owned renewal for shop tools for $1,499. Northeast Wisconsin, or Northeast Asphalt had a bill for $51,941.70. First, it gets charged to our bituminous account, and then we charge it out to the town of Larrabee, city of Clintonville, section four, town of Wyoming, and a little for the town of Bear Creek. 
Pumps Tire sold us some tires, charged to our stock account for $1,129.78. Raised Tires sold us some tires for $3,858.33. Stock account and then units 75, 33, 82, and 74. Safe Excavating with H2O um, helped us clean out a culvert on section one for $1,690. U.S. Lubricants sold us some oil for $6,302.56, charged for a stock account. Time to mute. Okay, he's got a bark too. The Wapaka County Treasurer had a bill for $6,100, which is the audit fees that comes back when they audit our books. That gets charged for administration expenses. We Energies had a bill for $6,268.76 charged to Buildings and Grounds for um, the gas at a Larrabee shop and then gas and electric for Wapaka. Um, it's always interesting to know what it takes for gas and electric for this, build, for this building for one month, just shy of $6,000. Wisconsin Department of Transportation invoiced us for their port of administration to pay the bridge contractors for building the one in Scandinavia and the one on Double B by Royalton. So that came in at $99,537.13. Wisconsin Kenworth had a bill for $1,566.06 charged for a stock account, units 82 and 33. American Asphalt of Wisconsin had a bill for $7,347.53 charged to our bituminous account, state discretionary maintenance agreement contract we had, which is additional to the RMA. And then we did a little bit of work on County Highway E to pave over those culvert pipes, some in the, for the village of Iola, and a little bit more for the town of Bear Creek. So overall, that is the uh, first payment match register of $352,768.46. Any questions, anybody? Dr. Dick, any questions? I need a motion to approve $352,768.46. I will move to approve. I'll second it. I've got a motion by Jim Nygaard, second by Lee Buck. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Now you're going to go to your next batch, right, Jason? Our second of the three batches starts off with uh, the December 9th. Both of these will be December 9th. The first one for this one exceeding the thousand dollars is Beaver of Wisconsin for truck for truck wash soap and soap injector, which gets charged to our shop supply account for two thousand five hundred and thirty one dollars. Diesel machine service had a bill for one thousand thirty eight dollars and forty five cents charged to our stock account. Fabric Cat had an invoice for three thousand eight hundred seventy five dollars and forty eight cents. Build back to units seven fifty seven five zero two. And 112. Fastenal had a bill split amongst all accounts for $1,600.16. Green Bay Highway Products sold us a plastic culvert to the Town of Union for $1,495.80. Hearts Auto Supply had a bill to our stock account for uh, brake rotors and pads for $1,713.20. JX Enterprises had a bill for $1,091.43. Charged to units 1182 and 1179. Keeney Architects sent us their final invoice for that space needs study up at the Larrabee shop, which occurred last year. Um, so that was for the remaining amount on that contract, which was an $8,500 contract. The remaining amount we paid in this batch register was $2,125. Lakeland Automotive had an invoice for $2,439.25 split amongst all accounts. MCC had a bill for $2,230.91, which was for gravel use, billed back to the town of Farmington and the town of Lebanon. Monroe Truck Equipment had a bill for $16,696.71. The majority of that went for anti-ice spray equipment for unit 1966. Raise Tire out of Green Bay had a bill for $2,601.00 charged to a stock account, units 1179 and 1172. And then road equipment had a bill for $1,956.36 charged to our stock account. Stump Ford um, sells us parts. A lot of it's for sheriff's department squads, 
So initially it gets put on our stock account for $2,255.79. And then it got invoiced back to P46, P48, P32, and P32. Syntec, um, they, Syntec is a company that um, monitors all of our fuel systems at our shops. And so we have a contract with them so this invoice from Syntex Systems was for $4,700, which gets billed to our fuel handling account. Is that for like leak detection or? The service agreements, the digital, everything. Okay. They have to do leak, yes. Everything to make sure that that is, um, passes the annual inspection, detections. Yes. And they, they will pressurize the, the upper tanks. Um, mostly it's visual. Yeah. Wapaka Water Utility sent us a bill for the water use here at this shop, charged to our Buildings and Crowns account for $1,038.80. Westwood Professional Services is designing County Highway 00 from E to 110. That was for $4,035. So this is the invoice for that. And that would conclude everything for this first payment batch register of December 9th of $71,309.71. Do so we have any questions on that $71,000? Okay, we have, I need a motion to approve $71,309.71. It's actually $74 cents if I can go that face. Yes. Also move. I'll second. Got a motion by Lee Muck, second by Jim Nygaard. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Okay, another, another batch? The final batch was just two quick ones for purchasing uh, safety toed shoes. Um, that didn't get on that one. So it's just um, purchasing safety toed shoes for two employees that came to $424.06. Move to approve. Second that. A motion by Jim Nygaard, second by Lee Muck. To approve four hundred twenty-four dollars and six cents. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, now the hard part. In no particular order, but uh, they line themselves up this way. Are our three retirees, um, and it's always an honor to have retirees come back to the highway committee for one of the last things that we do is have the committee. Award. We'll start with Todd Muck. Um, Todd, yeah, no, no. Todd Neiman. Well, he, he can be, I'll take yeah. him on. I'll take him on. We had seven seven people retire this this year. That's a lot of retirees. Todd Muck, or, uh, Jeff Muck and uh, Dennis Stibbs. Um, you three. Um, and Carrington. Kent. 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 Carrington. Then there was one more. I had. Can't think of his name. Anyway. Let's start with Todd Nemeth with 34 years of service to Wapaka County Highway Department. I have a plaque that I'm gonna read for each one of you. So it's pretty much the same, but whereas a key priority for Wapaka County Highway Department is the recruitment and retention of a qualified conscious, conscientious and motivated public employees to serve the community. And whereas one element of pursuing this priority is communicating to employees that their service to the community is valued and appreciated. And whereas Todd Nemeth has been a faithful, productive, and dedicated employee for over 34 years. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Wapaka County Highway Committee wishes Todd Nemeth a long, prosperous, and healthy retirement. Thank you, Todd. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Todd. I've known you a long time, yep. and I really appreciate what you've done. And, yep. and just so you know, in our last meeting, we talked a little bit about how many people are leaving us, and we may be short snowflowers, and so... I'm going to be pushing casing those guys to see if anybody ever wants to help us out after retirement. And Casey knows how I feel about that. So I don't know where we're at on that, but you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. We're yeah. going to miss all you guys and we need you. Yeah. We need people that can do that stuff. But that so. don't run into signs. Right. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> guys got the I did that this morning. Right? <laughs> uh, Yep, thank you. I do need a motion to pass that resolution, please. I so move. I'll second it. We got a motion by Jim Nygaard, second by Lee Muck. Yep. Pass the resolution. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries.
We've got Kevin Johnson here. Kevin was out of our Wapaka shop. As long as I can remember, were you out of any other shops? I plowed out of Helvetia one year there. <laughs> okay. Did that. So with Kevin Johnson's retirement, whereas a key priority for Wapaka County is the recruitment and retention of qualified, conscientious, and motivated public employees <laughs> to serve the community. Whereas Kevin Johnson has been a faithful, productive, and dedicated employee for over 30 years, Whereas one element of pursuing this priority is communicating to employees that their service to the community is valued and appreciated. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Wapaka County Highway Committee wishes Kevin Johnson a long, prosperous, and healthy retirement. With that, Kevin, thank you for your service. Enjoy. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah. You're not off the hook either, because I'm, no. <laughs> I'm pushing it. <laughs> like I told Todd. Thank you very much. Yep. I greatly appreciate it. 30. 30 and 34, those are a long time. You know, it's the top ones. 30, but I mean, you yeah. think about yeah. that. That's 102 years of service. That's, that's, you know, I worked 35 years in what I did, but that. I worked in three right. different that's environments. Two, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, <laughs> even more, I all love in Wapaka. Just that you, Wapaka County is lucky with you three people. Okay, I smile. It's a happy day. Good. <laughs> and I need a motion, please. Yeah, okay, I need a motion. I'll so move. I'll second it. I got a motion by Lee Muck, second by Jim Nygaard to approve this. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All Aye. Aye. And the motion carries. And our final retiree for today, Mr. Michael Jacoby. <laughs> Mike is out of our Larrabee facility. Have you ever plowed anywhere else besides Larrabee? Um, mm -hmm. Always out of that Just shop. Stuff. Town ships I've been in there and all the county roads and state roads. Today I'm the highway commissioner, but if you could backward <laughs> me up until I, when I was like 12, 13 years old, I remember going to hunting cabins and they would talk to <laughs> Mike Jacoby would be there with the Dray Falls and Lona Wagons and we'd be having a good time. And it was different then as I see it now, but the respect for county workers is is was the same that it is now, I guess. I just look at it different because I work here. But uh, you did a good job mentoring him. Thank you. I've known him pretty small or pretty much my whole life. Yeah, he was a little yeah. alien and turned out good, right? Yeah. 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 Cabin on Hunting Road on oh, wow. 45. We had fun there. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas a um, key priority for a packet county again is the recruitment and retention of qualified, conscientious, and motivated public employees to serve the community. And whereas one element of pursuing this priority is communicating to employees that their service to the community is valued and appreciated. Whereas Mike Jacoby has been a faithful, productive, and dedicated employee for over 38 years. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Wapaka County Highway Committee wishes Mike Jacoby a long, prosperous, and healthy retirement. Congratulations, Mike. Thank you. Good job, and, and you're not off the hook either. <laughs> I don't know if people will help us out, but we got to work it out through Mandy in the courthouse, and we're going to push for it. Casey knows how I feel. How do Amy calls it? Casual call in place. Yeah. It's just the case. <laughs> you know, snow's going to keep Thank coming, you. and you guys have all the experience when we're in trouble. Yeah, I've been older and done it, I guess. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Good job. Thank Can you, I get guys. a motion? Yeah. I move to okay. approve that. Uh, I got a motion to approve it by Jim Nygaard. Second. Second by Larry Buck. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? You guys are officially retired, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. You know, the, the foundry has started doing something like that. Uh, <laughs> I don't say don't go work to the foundry. I'm just comparing that. But Joe's saying to, to uh, what we want to try and hear if we can bring back experienced guys like you I mean, we have to train younger people and you know there, there's no reason that some of these guys couldn't be helped in some of the training processes too there's, we'll talk about this a lot later i hate to i don't want to scare you guys out but you're valuable just so you know you are very valuable thank you you looking at doing something that after the first of the year or we, we gotta work we gotta case has got to sit down with mandy and the hr and figure out what, but, but it was exposed to them last week in a meeting that we're going to have to look at it, right, Casey? Correct. There's a uh, a little bit of making sure we don't mess with Wisconsin retirement system that you're, there's like a, a period that you can't be employed there and so forth. So we'll see how that all pans out. 
but we are exploring it. Just that's the best. I hate to dangle a carrot, but we are exploring. Yeah, and we have to. It's good business, you know. We don't want you guys to get bored. <laughs> just, just so you know, you're going to get up. Otherwise, you lose your hair if you retire. <laughs> if I retire and I said I get up every day with nothing to do and I go to bed every night half done. And you're going to find that out real fast. You know? And you don't know how you got it all done before. Right. <laughs> it was the smartest thing I ever had was retire. So I'm telling you also, you made a good decision also. You know, everybody, everybody, I you, think you told me one time, retire while you're in office. You have health. Yes. I don't care how much money you got. Right. You don't have health, you have nothing. Yep. Yeah. And I got friends that can't do anything that work till the end. And, you know, well, I've seen it several times. Yep. All right. All right. Uh, just don't sit down in the house and watch TV. Is that time good? <laughs> I should. I got a little bird dog that wakes me every morning, bright and early. And believe me, we were blowing snow before six this morning. Nothing wrong with that stuff, you know? Yeah. I was plowing on 3.30. I know you said that it's... I do wish I would like to say one thing. Dick was my first boss here, hmm. and I wish that he was here today. I know that he can't make it, but uh, that was uh, quite the day, Dick, when I started. Did you hear that, Dick? Todd said that uh, he can remember you being his first boss here, and it was quite the day on his first first experience. Was it during the winter snow plowing? Oh, it snowed. It snowed oh. hard that day. So it snowed hard and it blew. And the next morning, Bob and I run in the ditch, and Mike had to come and pull us out. <laughs> 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 oh. Team. A lot of stories. Yeah, all good. Dick was my. I was a good employee. He was a good, good man. I was early for work. Never late. Thank you. Enjoyed coming to work. Yep. You're only as good as the people around you, and there's a perfect example right there. You betcha. God, Dick was my second boss. Okay. So he retired. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and, I, and I, I think it's great that Dick's on our committee because yep. he yep. understands the whole game. Who you walk a mile in another man's moccasins, you don't know. Right. Are you guys sticking around or heading out? You take her back to work. No, I got up. I got so I, I need some pictures. Do you want to Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you around. Yeah. You know where I live. Yeah. <laughs> Much of you. You wouldn't hear your voice there. Not real close. <laughs> yeah. I just put the snowblower on my big tractor, so it's easy for me to blow snow down. I'm ready just to just walk through things. You know where I am, too. I'm usually in my garage. So there's the something. Football games, there's the Football ABs. game, playing cards, building something. Well, it's yep. always something going on. Quite a refrigerator. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> there's, always, there's always cold Mountain Dew, and if I know you're coming, oh, yeah. I'll have sun drop. Tomorrow night, we'll see you. Yeah. Yep. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Take care. Thank you. Don't yeah. be afraid to stop in and visit us. Yeah. Oh, no, we won't. But. That's, That's tough to lose three people like that in one lost the year. Oh boy, yes. Yeah. So, how is our plow route situation? They're all covered today, but our foremen who don't have assigned routes are filling in, and we've got three guys pending employment here to replace them. Okay. They've all been offered positions. So, yeah. but we get filled, and yeah. they won't get filled with brand new people either. The people coming in got some experience. That's, Not on yeah. the county system yet. No, no, that's awesome. No, yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is the kind of snow that if you don't know what you're doing, there's could do a lot of damage to mailboxes <laughs> <Yep. laughs> and signs and soft shoulders ripping up. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah Joe knows about mailboxes. <laughs> I gouged my driveway this morning with the tractor. Just a little gravel to replace. Yeah. Moving forward, 5050 Bridge, Albert reimbursement request for Town of Muckwa, Lane Road, and Jennings Road. Yes, we've got um, two of them. The first one I'll start off with here is on Lave Road. The, the initial estimate for Lave Road came in 
at $11,500 and the work was performed significantly less than that. It came in at $6,129. And so the amount the highway committee has pre-approved now for payment needs to approve is only for $3,064.74, which is half of the total cost of the project. So I need approval for Labor Road for $3,064.74. And so I make some motion. I need a second. Mark seconds. Motion by Fred Zog, second by Lee Muck. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Now we need one for Jennings, right? The second project was for Jennings Road. The estimate that was initially approved ahead of time was uh, for $15,000. The cost came in only at $10,785.27. So half of the actual amount of the costs, which we need to approve, is for $5,392.64 for the culvert replacement on Jennings Road, again, town of Muckwa. Zog moves to approve. Fred Zog made the motion to approve. I'll second. Tim Nygaard seconded it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on. Training for engineering specialists. Anytime we send an employee to a training, we like to get approval from the highway committee so you know what, what we're up to. And annually, we've, we've approved Kyle to go to the Surveyors Institute. Um, up on the screen here, it's being hosted on January 25th through the 27th. In addition, there's one day, which is Monday, January 24th, which is, um, it's called a tech conference. And Kyle wants to attend that technology conference. It's just that we don't have the, um, the agenda to share with you. So what I need. 24th, Monday is the 23rd, according to this. I didn't want to kill him. All right. Choose. That's not the same thing. That's not. I Kyle's. know. I know it's not the same thing, but he's Monday the twenty fourth, and this says Monday the twenty third. I don't know what what the twenty what the Monday is. There's a calendar right there. Can you see? There's this book I'm looking at. January twenty third is Monday. Okay. So anyway, oh yeah, then Tuesday the twenty fourth, right? Yeah, there yeah. You know. yeah. So the uh, the tech conference is on the twenty fourth, which Kyle would like to attend. Spend a night at the same place, and then the Surveyors Institute kicks off the next day at the same place which is the 25th through the 27th. And so I need approval from the committee to send Kyle uh, to approve the tuition of $340 plus either two or three days at a hotel, depending on how many days he intends to go based off of the tech conferences agenda, which he, we don't have yet. So I need a motion. Um, so move. You might, you might make a motion. Jim Nygaard seconded it. All in favor? Aye. 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 What was motion carries? There we go. Your supervisor's report. I don't think you, you've had anything, right? Um, meetings or conferences, right? I just, I just uh, was out to DuPont and I, we're, we're talking about their bridges and such like that, but I referred them to uh, Sue and, uh, and you uh, for the Quarter Lines uh, Road there, and then a weight limit situation they have there. And, Sue has said that uh, they've already called uh, trying to get their situation straightened out there. But okay. They're getting much better up there, but they're taking time. I went, I went to both the Scandinavia Village and town meeting this earlier this week, and the uh, village is possibly talking about some chip sealing and stuff, but they're, they, uh, if, I know it takes time from your staff, but if you can walk them through, if there's any money programs out there, they're kind of overwhelmed with, with their stuff and they don't know where to look. If there is any funds available, uh, what time frames might be if it's, if they wait six months a year on some projects, if there'd be uh, LRIP or something there, they just, they're, they're a little bit overwhelmed with some of their, their sewer stuff they got to do and, and, uh, I don't know, the town's also at, uh, you're doing a good job, but they, it's kind of a continual process to keep them educated and up to speed on what kind of funding might be out there. And that's where the villages and the cities also have the League of Municipalities to bank on. And so the village mm -hmm. asked me a question that I didn't know anything about the city related into things. And so I referenced 
um, her to Justin Barons, the public works director for the city of Wapaka, and then them two started talking. So now you've got the city of Wapaka who looks at it through a city standpoint, working with a village just up the road, you know, mm -hmm. 10 miles or so. So they do work helps. together on it a helps. few things. Uh, yeah. Well, so many of our public officials uh, uh, are new unless you've been around for 30 years, you know, so a lot of these people that are just elected, they, they have no clue where they're going. So anytime, I know it's more work for you people, but uh, it helps uh, county wise, everybody to get it. So, so a Packer County Towns Association has a strong group, really strong. And I think there's a lot of knowledge shared in that. I don't know if the municipalities have it as well, but I'm seeing the village of Iola attends those meetings as well, because mm -hmm. same, sure. same mentors. Yeah. Maybe you can mention that, but yeah, maybe. Attended yeah, towns association. Was pretty much runs it. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, it, it's yeah, well, that's it, true. It opens, it opens doors that they might not know about. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So other report. I know that Supervisor Keppen asked for uh, some brining numbers, so we shared uh, a brining report with him, and it's kind of interesting for highway staff as well. In 2019, we produced a little over 42,000 gallons of salt brine. In 2020, as our high capacity brine maker and the demand was increasing with the truck use and outfitting our equipment to apply salt water, it went up to 85,000. Then in 2021, the total numbers were over 231,000. So you can see this number climbing. And then so far as of November 27th, we're tracking 157,000 gallons used, which today's storm is gonna burn through quite a bit as well. And I don't know how much per storm, but. It's just kind of neat to see them figures yeah. for uh, and that, that supervisor kept and asked. I don't know if he's going to talk about it on his radio show or what. What What do you burn through probably in a day like today? I mean, or is that a terrible question? Probably? Well, our big wedge tanks can hold like 1,600 gallons, so they'll empty a tank pretty much. Um, and then some of our trucks have the tank that just hangs on the back yet. Them are 100 gallons. So we vary anywhere from a 100 gallon tank to a 1600 gallon tank, depending on how old they are. And we outfit our new trucks with these big wedge tanks. And so what you use today, you may do that again tomorrow, depending on what happens tonight, freezing in time, right? And the salt water will burn through it versus even having to put the plow down if it's just a fuzz, yeah. which saves on our blades and stuff. Yes, right. And you're using that on... on State and pre we, and we pre wet the county salt and sand as it goes down on the road. It's already pre sticks better. sticks better. It's already pre wet and starts that salt rock salt process chemical process of get hot. It's neat. Yeah, it's interesting. It yeah. really is it's such a saving on the amount of salt you use. A few years ago, when we had to make the decision to purchase our brine on our own dime, our brine maker, yeah. we did it. Now it's a revenue generator for us. But good deal. <laughs> So with that, I've got quite a few other things to talk about with agenda item seven, which is just project updates. We have six uh, personnel. Oh, personnel. So employee updates. Um, we've been interviewing. We've been seeing retirements. It's just a flurry of people leaving. I think in 2022, I counted 14 people have left this department, not all through retirement. Some took different positions. Some was through a, a retention issue, but uh, 14 bodies to lose is a lot to replace. Yeah. And knock on wood, we get th the three offers that we've offered. They come and work for us. And we'll only be short like three three positions of which our, our foremen during the winter time are capable of plowing. So it doesn't seem to be an issue on that. I do have a voicemail from the town of Iola who stated that the contractor that services them right now is indicated this is for surely the last winter okay. and he needs help. And so the town of Iowa does not know where to go. And so I just wanted to share that with them. Who's doing Iowa? Uh, Bestel. Okay. Yeah. Bestel. Yeah. So with that, he's well, reached he's out. probably doing Helvetia too, right? Well, I, I yes. would assume so. He was, yeah. I don't know if he's got two trucks and he's just one is one is giving them grief or what the story is. Yeah, I just wanted to share that with the committee that Mark Springers, the town chair from Iola, has left me a voicemail and I said I will have the discussion, but not this winter. I'm short staff and equipment myself. So 
That's too late in the game to plan. Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. soon that's how that stuff works. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if there isn't a lot of snow, the guy that contracts with him, he doesn't have enough work all winter either. We've been in that. We're in that mess. A few things to brag about, and I like mentioning this, even though they're not full-time employees, we had some summer students here. One is a, uh, a, a child of another county employee out of the courthouse. They were awarded a $2,000 scholarship through the w Wisconsin County Highways Association. I'm like, cool, that was one of our guys. Yeah. Another one's getting hired uh, or applying um, over in Pennsylvania or that part of the country. And then um, a third one, there's something significant going on with the third one as well, but you start hearing these stories of people that came up through our ranks and it's pretty, pretty neat. So kudos to Kyle for, uh, for a lot of his engineering students working with him and what he's taught them. Maybe it's just how to report to work and work well, but that's, that's the key ticket. I don't have any other resignations on the near dire document or retirements, I should say. No one's indicated to us that they're hanging it up yet this winter, so we should be should be good. But you never know. How many do we have that could? Three. Okay. Well, if you can say could, I mean, even talking at Chris's age at fifty five, you can re collect. So all the employees that are fifty five or older actually are eligible. Yeah. Right, Chris. I, I think I believe so. I, so. I, so. I would bet. Situation. I bet you there is a dozen. Okay. A dozen that could. They don't take a penalty at 57. It increases after that, but they take a little bit of a penalty at 55. Okay. Per month up until 57. At least that's how it was. Okay. And I'm, and I'm glad that you're looking into, you don't want to affect their retirement mm -hmm. by coming back. Just a year ago, I could say that we were at 14, 15 employees. 16 of oh, these three gentlemen. Yeah. And we were maybe at 20 people a year ago. Well, there's about 12 that could. That's all I've got for um, for personnel. We'll jump into the commissioner's report then, which is agenda item number seven. Okay. I'm just gonna grab things that I have to talk about in no exact order, but to start off in January is the winter road school. You should have all received an agenda. If, if you're interested in attending or not, please let Sue know. Our deadline is December 22nd. We, we need to know ASAP. We need to know as soon as possible if you're attending or not. I'm going to have my other hip fixed, so I don't, oh. I don't know when I first. But give me a little bit to look at something. I probably won't. Okay. Fred or Dick? I know Dick said no, but Fred, do you have any thought process on going? No, I can't go anywhere because of my legs standing around. Okay. So that'll be um, January 23rd, 24th, 25th time frame, right? <clears throat> and then I should be going myself since since um, Kyle's attending the survey years conference. And I, I typically take our operations manager with me during the summer months. The next thing I've got is we'll just... Um, after this meeting, there will be a, a bridge committee where we need to sit down and decide how we're going to rank the bridge um, candidates, the engineers. So that'll be a follow on committee meeting to this. Going through the commissioner's report, I've invited or I've asked the highway committee members to attend uh, tomorrow afternoons or evenings uh, dinner. I'd like to go and go to, to dinner. So you should have reported back to Sue if you can make that or not. Right now, I believe we got about 38 employees that are attending. It's more of a management staff get together. We pay for it. Um, it's not paid for by the county highway department's budget, but I wanted to make sure that I uh, remind you to, to attend that tomorrow evening. Um, Christmas is sneaking up on us so that we have Monday. We have Friday off before Christmas Eve. Then we have the Monday off celebrate Christmas, which occurred, uh, was it on Sunday? Then we have the following Friday off to celebrate New Year's Eve. And then we have the following Monday off to celebrate New Year's Day. So our, our um, we'll have a short week coming up there between Christmas and New Year's. Hopefully it doesn't snow and some people can take some, some valuable location. Just a question that uh, if they got to go out on a holiday, what is, is it double time? It's overtime. Oh, just overtime. Plus the holiday. 
to look at eight, eight hours holiday plus whatever they work at overtime. Okay. Sure. Okay. Eight hours holiday plus in case somebody asks me stupid questions. I, yeah. Does that, does that week run Monday through Saturday? Sunday, Sunday to Saturday. Saturday. Pardon? Sunday, Sunday to Saturday, Saturday, but Saturdays and Sundays are overtime. And so are holidays. Yeah. Which is good. Every, when that, that was passed a couple of years ago. Every Saturday and Sunday, regardless of how much you've worked earlier in the week, is is time and a half. And the holidays are automatically time and a half plus your holiday pay. It's it's a good a good thing for retention. Yeah. Other things going on. We've got um, was it county board is coming up next week. Tuesday. Yep, next week Tuesday. Yep. Um, the finance committee met yesterday. And through the reports, I know Christy Opperman, the clerk, had mentioned that our Highway Department Enterprise Fund is sitting higher than it has uh, since 2017. So that's good. We're growing. We're doing things in a positive direction to run a business, to afford our own trucks, which that's what, how we pay for them. So that was a, a good thing that came out of finance, which was unexpected because we didn't have a conversation about it. And all of a sudden she says that to everyone and, you know, Supervisor Federwoods looks over at me and <laughs> smiles. So that's a good thing for our highway department. Yeah. Uh, when she said, what is it, from 2017 or something like that? That's this is the highest it's ever been in that time of the year. I thought, holy gosh, yeah. that was awesome that's news. So, yep. Yeah. So you're doing, you're, you're figuring the uh, numbers in the right place. Yeah. Our, um, Highway committee involvement. We've got a traffic safety committee that's coming up on January 12th that we're going to be attending. Um, so what I was looking at is if we could have our next highway committee meeting January 19th, would that be, uh, that, that's the request to have the next highway committee meeting January 19th at 9 a.m. here. That would avoid a conflict with the January 12th traffic safety committee of which I've got two agenda items to discuss at that one. We need a motion. Just, no, just change it. So just change it. Yeah, that, that'll be our next meeting. And then you hear that, Dick? You hear that, uh, Fred? Next highway meeting will be Thursday, January nineteenth. Yep. Gotcha. If, if you wanted to look out a month beyond that too, it's February sixteenth. It's basically we're going to try going with the third Thursday through these winter months. The third Thursday. Um. Okay. Other highway department activities, we are looking at some, some shop repair, uh, some shop repair in the floor at New London, right along the, the main drainage bay up the middle. That's a good work for our crews to replace some of the concrete up there that's busting out. Um, we actually are taking a few pieces of equipment up to that sandblasting company just south of Marion. We're going to try them out. Yeah. Uh, I met with them over the, I guess, the Thanksgiving gun deer season and dropped off a stove. He introduced himself, said this is the services he can provide. And so we're going to try him out with this with our older service truck and see how he does. I know that they're also servicing a lot of uh, Seagraves, sandblasting and painting a lot of stuff for yeah. Seagraves. So must have some good quality work there. Yeah, I, there's a lot of activity there. I've not met the man, so someday he gets a lot of stuff. I, I met him. I I dropped off one of my grain trucks there. The summary said he thought he could work it in, but he, he didn't get it done. done. Yeah. You know, but he's he had a big job out of state that <coughs> summer. Okay. And he's been doing work for Fox, and Fox's trucks look pretty sharp. Yeah, yeah. they keep their state. In our field operations, our crews have been just doing the normal crack filling, pothole filling, snow fencing. We did install a few pipes earlier on for the towns. <laughs> Uh, administration and engineering wise, we've got a few engineering contracts that are going to carry over from 2022 to 2023. And so we need to make sure that the funds are allocated for that for next year. Right now, we're assisting a few of the townships with bridge applications. The town of Royalton is the first one on the list, and that's for Bagulki Road, right going up here on 54. Um, they took it to their town board meeting, and now we're going to put in an application due before mid March. To, to receive some funding. I was trying to push the town of Larrabee to do their Buckby Road for a while, and they agreed to do it. Yeah. They were in the program. And as the program developed here, we just got an email from the state that said that the Buckby Road Bridge will now be 100% funded, oh. not an 80-20 cost share. So if we went to push that for them, that would be the debatable. So we got to keep pushing these bridges for these towns. 
because it seems like the program will be going more towards the 100% for the local rural roads. So good job. DuPont yeah. is sounding like they were going to contact you on some more, so maybe they did already. Yeah, DuPont yeah. has quarter line road bridge yeah. that yeah. is eligible. So okay. what's the, the span? Is, does that make a difference? Yes. It had to, it, the, where the water is underneath the bridge has to be 20 feet or greater. If it's 19 feet, 11 inches, it does not qualify. So in County Q, just south of V, that bridge is 19 feet, 11 inches and mm -hmm. does not qualify. We even brought the state gentleman out there to verify it. He's like, no, I can't stretch the tape. So oh. <laughs> but when you replace a structure like that, you probably want to get it 20 feet or greater so that it falls into a two-year inspection program. Well, a lot of these bridges, when you when you look at these older bridges where the road crosses, they they do tend to narrow up the stream. Yeah. Good point. It's yep. just the way they, they did them. Um, hmm. Kyle's working a lot with the engineering firms on his topo surveys, the um, county highway E project. We're getting some estimates up here for the HRRP. We're going to grind the curves off so that they meet their the design banking requirements based off of the radius of the curve. So Greg Floor is putting together some estimates for that. Otherwise, construction wise, there's not a lot of new things going on. We know that both of the bridges are open on B and double B. I touched again on our wetland mitigation bank compensation site plan. And that plan should be ready to go by Christmas. We're having email correspondence back and forth with McMahon right now. And um, one of the things that the Corps of Engineers and the DNR says is you're submitting this by Christmas. We have to go through the 45 day period for this and the 45 day period for that it has to deal with review times and public comment times. So March right now is looking a little debatable if it's going to be credits for sale in March. But he says it should be close. It should be right around there. But it took me to ask them what's the status because they don't tell me the status unless I ask. And I don't like that. I, I, I don't like it. But that's our job is to always follow up. Like Joe said, check and recheck. So that's the committee report. Um, we've got a few financials to share. If Sue were to just click on one, I should be able to grab it quick with my paper. The first one is a routine winter maintenance. Scrolling down, what's remaining on just the maintenance end of things? Way on the bottom, we've got 15% of our budget remaining for maintenance. We are, we're doing good. Snow plowing has been real mild yet. I know today was busy, but winter maintenance budget is sitting healthy. We'll get into more detail with that on the next one that you grab, which is, again, the top part remaining. We have $529,000 remaining up there. A lot of that's going to get absorbed in overruns on construction projects, of which at this time, without including the B and double B payments that we have to pay, we're over 11,000. So you take that 108,000 and that 97,000, that still has to get deducted out of here. We're about a quarter million dollars over on construction projects. But we're so over or under on the top that them two balance themselves out at the end of the year. I don't see any red flags from our department as far as having enough money in our overall pot. Um, and what about if we get a couple of big snowfalls yet before the end of the year? Still going to be sitting strong. Okay. okay. So we, I, I we think next week looks dry, cold. And then the year is over for yeah. the most part. Yeah. We, this is, this is, the business end of it, we save money by it by plowing snow. We make money. Another we make money because our guys are off our payroll. Them thirteen guys are chargeable to the state, and the eighteen guys are chargeable to the town, and they're not all sitting on my county budget, our county budget. So it, we make we make money by plowing snow, and we spend less of our our budget. We do charge a little bit more on equipment, but we need that revenue too to pay for it. So we got. It'll be interesting where we sit. I know we were within like 1% last year overall. And it's going to be close to that. And you can't beat that in today's world. So doing good. What's happening on fuel right now? We're seeing a reduced fall over. Have we bought any fuel or? The fuel prices have gone down. The diesel isn't coming down as fast as the unleaded. Right. And so we uh, at one point made it 
where we were paying a little over $5 a gallon, and that's our contracted bid for price diesel. That was diesel. for diesel. Now it's still above four, yeah. but it, it isn't up at that $5 mark yeah. anymore. Because it was, well, you 34,000 for a load. So it's it really, it, that's about 32, 34 is what that's been averaging. Now that's, I always watch that figure, but so we have not gained there yet compared to gas. I filled up myself, not that I need much diesel over winter, but I just, with the weirdness going on in the world, I thought, oh, I, I think I should have some on hand. You just need some expenses to get rid of the profit. <laughs> Close to the end of the year, my buddy. Yeah, yeah. No. How that, much was it? 427. So they paid you. Yeah. The state oh, is going to increase their oh, rates of the state's going to increase their rates of equipment an average of 4.5% across the board, but some of the different classes of equipment are a little less, some are a little more. Jumping into our equipment expenses or revenue over expenses, looking at the, how we close November out for um, way at the bottom. Let's just go way to the bottom. We're still about $66,000 less compared to last year as far as revenue over expenses. But we started off with little snow this spring, so we couldn't keep that stuff chargeable. We caught up considerably during um, construction season, paving season. And then once our transportation services bill was, was out there for paving highway N, then it really helped catch us up. It paid for the equipment to build in. So no red flags on that end. We don't control a lot of it. And then if we look into our next report, which is municipalities with, with and without service agreements, we're way down on those townships that have service agreements with us because we didn't plow a lot earlier on in the year. And then we had like the town of Caledonia, that alone we're down $323,000 because they hired us for a big subdivision development last year, um, just south of Reedfield by 45. And they, did, they couldn't afford to do that type of project this year. So that, that was a huge one that swayed us. Um, County Union last year had a big project for us. This year, couldn't afford to do it, so they didn't hire us. So, But then what offsets a lot of those costs, I would say the ones that help keep us afloat are our non-service agreement customers. They are actually up $284,000 worth of work compared to last year. So if you take the, you know, the decrease of our service agreement customers at 440, which is offset some by an increase with our service agreement customers, Right now, we're about $155,000 less work performed than we were the year before. And there was a lot of scares going on from them to try to hire for paving projects, to just do anything. They didn't want to spend that extra, whatever. If you, you take Caledonia's $323,000 out of there and Union's one hundred and ten, dollars we'd be blowing the doors off of last year. But they just can't afford to do them big jobs yeah. year after year. Um. I do have a staffing chart. I'll just send it around. It kind of shows how the department is staffed. It's interesting to see the green, the, the lighted green things, uh, which is the vacancies that we have. And I kind of put the names of those potential employees that may fill them. And equipment operators, equipment tech. Yeah, we're looking for three people. Another operator. Oh, six, seven. Seven, there's seven vacancies in the department of which we've got a few coming in, which would leave three if all of them accept the position. So that's still a little debatable. Looks like after the first of the year is when they would begin. In the meantime, our foremen are covering those roads. How, how many, this is going back to Iola again, how many miles of road do they have, do you know? Ah, uh, boy, less than 50. I would bet it's up to 50, 40. I would bet Iola has 49, 50 just off of, off the cuff. When the county used to plow for them, they would send in a truck and a grader. There were those two pieces that went because all of the dead ends, all of the weird hills. Um, that, yep. Who's doing, your, who's doing your time trip? It's uh, Chad Bestel. Yeah. Or is it Lashway? Lashway. Lashway. Yeah. And he, because he used to do it. Lashway used to do it. There's, yeah, that's a year to year thing too. Correct. Yeah. yeah. There's no money in making snow, uh, plowing snow. None. No. 
think they got into it because they had their equipment sitting and they weren't doing much and and uh, maybe it avoided putting somebody on unemployment for well, the we winter. We really don't want to get into more of it. No. You take one or two people that squawk at you because they ain't doing a good job and it'll burn you out too. And I think there's a little bit of that. So oh, yeah. yeah. Right on. That would conclude what I've got for the highway committee meeting. Just yeah. a comment. <clears throat> My granddaughter, she uh, works at the daycare crest uh, by mirrors there. She said, uh, put them snow fences up more often. It was entertaining your kids there for <laughs> two, three days while they were doing that because they're all looking out the window and watching those guys work. She said, it was very easy those three days to keep the kids <laughs> under control. So, no, but they do. And Nick's uh, son, Stanley, He's, uh, he's one of them, you know, but they, she just made a comment when she came up to the house. And those kids, they really like to watch people work and it was real entertaining. So sure. it's surprising that, you know, people do see our employees working and, and it's good to hear that it once in a while it's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I need a motion to adjourn. So move. We are adjourned. Fred, Dick, Lee Muck made the motion. Right. Okay, we're on. Say good night, Dick. Good night.